Hey Daily Dosers, Chris back with you. I know I had a couple weeks off. I'm refreshed, a little more tanned, feeling good. And I know I'm talking to what? Two, three, four, four, 12 of you. 12 of you, I'm the first because most of you had a late night last night. Some of you aren't watching at all today, but for those of you that joined, you're looking at this going, oh, one more recap of 2020. No, not really. I want to give you a little thought to jump to 2021 because I don't know what your 2020 was like. I know we spent some daily doses kind of wrapping up, but I promise you this, your 2020 was nowhere in comparison to 605 BC. And right now you're thinking, should I know something about 605 BC? No, unless you're some Bible geek nerd or some big world historian. You see, back in 605 BC, there was an epic battle. There were three major heavyweight champions, if you would, in the world that time. Three major powers in the known world. And that was the Assyrians from the north, Egypt that had power and dominance for so long in the south, and this new up and coming Babylonian empire. And as the Babylonians defeated the Assyrians, then they met the Battle of Carchemish, 605 BC. And they once and for all defeated Egypt. And Egypt would no longer be a world power. And Babylon would hold that title once and for all. And on the way back home, Babylon did what, well, what the Babylonian Empire did is how they ruled from a distance. They would take men and women from different tribes, different nations, different countries, and they would move them along with them and take them back home. Just to remind you, if you ever revolted, if you guys ever tried to go against them from a distance, many of your sons and daughters were back home with them. It was a great way for the Babylonian Empire just to keep their world dominion and power. And in the midst of it, we find the story of four. Now, now here's where some of you church people would recognize names like Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. See, in Daniel chapter one, we find, well, we find the end of 2020 and the beginning of 2021. We find the end of a time in a year that none of them would want to go back and relive. Their entire nation was destroyed. Their entire temple was brought to ruins and torn down. And many of their sons and daughters were taken captive back with the new heavyweight title of the world, the, the world dominion, the Babylonians. And in the midst of that, we find four young men, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that go through an amazing transformation. I want to read you a little bit from Daniel chapter 1. This happens back in Babylon now. And it said, Among those who were taken from Judah, Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. The chief official gave them new names to Daniel, Belshazzar, to Hananiah, Shadrach, to Mishael, Meshach, and to Azariah, Abednego. You see, their past year had so much destruction and change in it, even their names had to be changed. Their names were loyal to the one true God, the creator God, Yahweh. And yet under a Babylonian empire and rule, their names are changed. Their reputation and identity is changed. And everything now is about the, the sun God, the moon God, the gods of Babylon. And to say it's been a tough year is one of the greatest understatements ever. Now in a new country, under a new transformation, under new names, under supposedly new allegiance, we have this verse. But Daniel resolved not to defile himself with the royal food and wine. And he asked the chief official for permission not to defile himself this way. Now God had caused the officials to show favor and sympathy to Daniel. But the official told Daniel, I'm afraid of my Lord the king who has assigned your food and drink. Why should he see you looking worse than the other young men your age? The king would then have my head because of you. And Daniel said to the guard, whom the chief official had appointed over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael and Azariah, please just test your servants for 10 days. And the story starts to unfold. Amidst everyone that was taken from the past year, amidst everything that was destroyed, amidst everything that was broken, everything that was rebranded, renamed, we now have basically the cafeteria at Babylon University of the mind and transformation of all these young men and young women that are taken captive. And we find the story of four, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who simply at a cafeteria say, we're going into this next chapter of our lives, whatever it holds, committed not to defile ourselves. That's it. That, that, that word there is used twice. It means not to be tarnished, not to be tainted, not to be stained in any way with the world that they were living in. And the officials even realized, hey, you guys are going to look different. You're going to seem different from the rest of culture. And Daniel said, just test us and try us. Well, they had no idea what they were doing. 
they had no idea that three chapters from now, this would be a fiery furnace for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They had no idea that in chapter six, this would become the famous story of a lion's den waiting for Daniel. They had no idea what the next few chapters of their life would hold. But a decision made at a cafeteria table would change all the chapters from this day, chapter one, forward. Regardless of the year they had, they had every right to give up on God, every right to give up on grace, every right to give up on hope, and yet they held tighter to God. Let's not defile ourselves. Let's not let the world in any way stain us, tain us, make us different. In fact, we're gonna be different from the culture around us. And God said, now that's where I start. That's where the new chapter begins. On this first day of the year, regardless of where it's been taken, rebranded, changed, transformed, broken down in your life. May all of us come to grips with a chapter one where God starts. God, may this year the world not rub off on me, but I make an impact on it. May I live differently as a follower of Christ, not a follower of our culture, because that's where God started then. And I promise you, Daily Dosers, that's where God's going to start today.